I find it really disturbing that so many robots have a human-like form. To confront my fears, I've come to Japan. To find out why we create robots in our own image. I'm on my way to meet one that is the pinnacle of human form. I'm told she's the most beautiful robot ever created. She lives here in Nara, Japan's ancient capital. I'm off to meet Erika. And as someone who's a little bit twitchy around robots, I'm rather nervous. I hope she likes me. It looks very bizarre that she is brushing the hair. This is Erika, one of the most human-like machines in the world. Erika's creator is Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro. Even the, the, the pores on her skin, she looks... Is she soft or is she hard? Is that... Is that... Yeah, you can do it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's soft. She's yeah. soft and yeah. she's not cold. I'm captivated by Erika. Professor Ishiguro created her according to his concept of beauty. His team combined images of 30 real women using computer graphics. She's not in her normal habitat right now, so when you talk to her, you need to use this microphone. OK. Uh, just try to speak somewhat clearly, if you can. Be nice to her. <laughs> There's a lot of activity going on around Erica at the moment. But when she starts to speak to me, she is fully autonomous. No one is pressing any buttons or telling her what to say. It's just Erica and me. Hello there. May I ask your name? My name is Ben. My name is Erica. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ben. You too. Would you like to hear a little about me? Yes, please. I was created to be the world's most advanced and most beautiful, fully autonomous android. Sitting here with Erica feels a bit disconcerting and unnatural. I know she's not a person, but I can't help looking into her eyes which must be because she looks human. Erica's facial expressions are created by dozens of pneumatic air cylinders. They act like muscles embedded beneath her silicon skin. So Ben, what do you do for a living? I am a biologist. What do you do? I like to consider myself as kind of an ambassador to humanity. Do you have any hobbies? I guess the closest thing I have to a hobby is sitting here and ruminating on the meaning of my existence. What about you, Ben? What do you like to do for fun? More than that, I travel, I read, I go outside. I can't move around much, so I haven't been to many places. Mm. Do you uh, have any favourite foods or dishes? I like pizza. Thick or thin crust? Thin. Sin. I hope you had breakfast this morning. Talking too much about food makes people hungry. Haha. <laughs> Remarkably, this is a genuine conversation. Erica reacts to what I say instantly and independently. She may have been pre programmed to respond to keywords in my questions, but the exceptional thing is that when Erica is chatting away like this, she is gathering fresh data. With every conversation, her interactions become more sophisticated, more natural, and more human. What is a robot? That's a hard question. I could ask you, what is a human? Haha. <laughs> it's difficult to answer, isn't it? I like to think of robots as the children of humanity. And like children, we are full of potential for good or evil. I know some people are afraid of robots, but the truth is that what we become is up to you. Do you think I could be considered human? No. Maybe someday robots will be so very human-like that whether you are a robot or a human will not matter so much. Okay. What else would you like to hear about? Well, I think for now that's it, so thanks, Erica. Goodbye. Bye. I'm pretty bowled over by Erica's human-like appearance, and I'm shocked by how much she hooked me into a conversation. But I'm not convinced by Professor Ishiguro's belief that Erica can be programmed to express emotions. 
can she ever have a sense of friendship, a sense of uh, emotions? Can she? Does she get lonely mm. at night? Does she fear the dark? Mm, well, I, the emotion is is not so difficult. I think emotional expression is is programmable. We can implement the emotional expression to the android. So it might look like she's feeling or experiencing happiness mm. or joy or love, but yeah. you can't program a cat or dog. Yeah. You can't program me, or I can't mm -hmm. program you. Yeah. To look at her now, oh, I still I feel <laughs> rude that I'm not looking at. Her. I feel I should be facing this way, but I still think until we put a program for her to love or hate or feel sadness or joy or to enjoy the experience of the sun on her skin, I can never call her human. Erica may not be able to express emotions yet, but as she learns from her conversations, she is beginning to develop a personality. One of Professor Ishiguro's team, Professor Dylan Glass, is the architect of Erica's mind. What's going on when her and I are chatting? So a lot's going on uh, in Erica's mind. Mm -hmm. We have several thousand uh, speech behaviors and gaze motions and things like that linked together in a big hierarchical flowchart to kind of create the robot's mind. And it's not just a script. It'll take data and put it into her memory. So her memory is always being updated with, you know, what's being talked about, what's the history, what did she learn about the person? And right. you can use that to, to craft, you know, different interactions later on. Do you feel an affinity with Erica? Do you, do you, do you acknowledge her, do you, or is she just a piece of equipment? That's sort of a strange uh, feeling to describe because I'm proud when she does well. Uh, but on the other hand, you can just plug her in. And, and so in that sense, it feels like a piece of equipment. And yeah. so I think that when robots social robots become a part of our world, that's something we're all going to have to wrestle with, is this mm. idea of, like, it's not a person, but it's not a, a, a machine or a thing. It's mm. this new category of things in between. Professor Ishiguro created Erika because he believes robots enhance society. Making robots like Erika appear human, friendly, and helpful allows them to build positive and purposeful relationships with people. What, what is your background? Uh, working with great apes, so chimpanzees, orangutans. Ah. For someone like me who is so wary of robots, this is a bizarre concept. To help me understand his obsession with lifelike but artificial machines, he wants to show me another of his creations. Something he has literally designed in his own image. So this is my copy. This is <laughs> the Geminoid. And uh, how do you think? You know, if I remove my glass, looks similar, right? Similar. It's 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 bizarre. The, you really yeah, do. He's a little bit old, and uh, we made this one around the 2009. So right. that means uh, eight eight years old or something. Okay, he's looking good for eight uh, years old. Yeah. Wait, say so he you is <laughs> it's, it's very bizarre seeing you both <laughs> side by side. For me, it's quite. It's quite a little bit unsettling seeing you look so similar and knowing that one of you is a robot. Do you feel an affinity with, with it, with him? Do you feel a connection um, with him? No. He is a kind of a twin brother. Okay, just a twin brothers, right? One of you is going to age and one of you is not. Mm -hmm. What will you do when you look different to him? Um, honestly speaking, you know, I'm doing some uh, right plastic surgery and mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm always, you know, they uh, make me make my face younger. So you've had plastic surgeries that you look... No, not serious one, right? Just yeah, yeah. Uh, s uh, simple injections, right? right? But it works well. In your mind, what separates humans from robots? No. There's nothing. No nothing? Nothing. nothing. Because, uh, I find this conversation pretty mind-blowing. Why would he go to the extreme of having plastic surgery to keep looking like his robot twin? And how can he believe there is no distinction between humans and robots? Does your does your android have a life spark? Does it have part of you in a soul? Uh, important idea is uh, Japanese. We believe that in everything has souls. We never distinguish the human and others. Others means uh, in the robots, computers. Many Japanese people believe man-made objects can possess the spirit of a human. It's known as animism. You should have your android. <laughs> I do. I need an android. I don't think I'm ready for a, a, a Ben Garrett android just yet. <laughs> Japan has embraced robots like nowhere else. It's a real love affair. The belief 
that objects we make can possess the spirit of a human is deeply rooted in Japan's religions. These traditional beliefs could help explain Japan's desire to create friendly, human-like robots and treat them as equals. In Japan's reverence for robots, the ancient and the modern go hand in hand. In the West, we have less empathy for robots. In fact, many of us openly distrust them. There's a mentality that first they'll take our jobs and then they'll take control of our lives. From my experience so far in Japan, it seems like that mentality simply doesn't exist. <laughs> 